This is part six in a series of videos in which I'm attempting to repair a Wren executive computer system. In the previous video I got as far as attaching the logic analyzer to the Wren and uh, I was asked to give a bit more detail in how I had the analyzer configured. So if you're familiar with these analyzers uh, you might want to skip towards the end of this video. Um, but the way I normally go about fault finding varies from uh, repair to repair and in these videos I tend to go through a bit more of a long-winded process uh, just to make them more interesting and a bit more informative. A lot of this I will normally skip straight through um, once I've uh, got an idea as to what's going on but when I'm making the videos I tend to include some of the individual steps. Uh, as I said before if you want to see more of that then uh, please let me know. But uh, what I quite often end up doing is using a, a logic analyzer and that's especially the case when I don't have schematics it can save a lot of time. Uh, it may seem uh, a complicated thing to do but it doesn't take very long to set it up and once you have it um, configured it, uh, it can save an awful lot of messing about. So before I look back at the REN what I'll do is just briefly explain how I've got the analyzer configured for this uh, particular repair. Because I generally work on more than one project at a time and I don't want to keep reconfiguring the analyzer I normally start by creating a directory to save the particular settings into. So in this case I will save that to hard disk and in this case I called it REN for obvious reasons. So what I can then do is simply select that subdirectory whenever I'm working on this particular project and then I can load the configuration files and that saves me having to reconfigure every single time I load up the analyzer for this project. What I do for each particular project is I create a configuration that matches what I'm actually trying to uh, monitor. So in this case what I have is 16 bits on the first pod for the address lines. The first 8 bits of the second pod are for data and then the remaining bits on that pod are for the um, control lines that I currently have hooked up. And then obviously I'll expand this depending on which additional lines I want to configure. Okay, so once I have the configuration set as I want it, I need to define a clock input. I need to define a uh, clock input on here because I have the analyzer set to state machine mode. Uh, there are two modes you can run this in, or two basic modes. One is state machine and one is uh, timing. The timing mode, it works a bit like an oscilloscope where it's taking samples of the inputs at whatever interval you define. State machine is where it takes a sample based on the clock that you feed it. So in other words, it will take a sample on whichever clock edges you define. And I tend to use state mode mostly for this type of fault finding because the timing mode can give you a skew uh, or it could even miss events that you might be interested in capturing. Whereas the state machine, the data you're seeing is synchronous with the a clock on the target machine so it tends to be more informative but once you've done that it means you need to define a clock input in this case I'm using the uh, J input and as you can see I'm selecting both rising and falling edges. The edge you use will depend on uh, what it is you're trying to achieve but uh, just be aware that if you uh, only select a single edge either rising or falling then sometimes you can miss important uh, information. So once you have your clock set you are then ready to set uh, a trigger. So in this case I have trigger A set and trigger A down here as you can see is uh, address 0. So it's in hex of course. Data is don't care read is don't care and write is also don't care. So now whenever we encounter um, a value of zero on the address bus the analyzer will be triggered. The REN is currently running so if I go to the waveform and arm 
you can see that um, we've triggered on a zero value for the address. Now this is how I had it set up for the previous testing and we got as far as looking at the initial capture of data and that was correct but now I want to look at the um, access to the SRAM chips to see if they are actually being uh, accessed at all or if the Z80 is trying to read um, from them or write to them. So. Okay, so looking back at the analyzer screen, what we want to do now is trigger on uh, the uh, SRAM chip select line. So we'll go back to trigger. I already have uh, the RAM chip select line set as one of the inputs. We'll go to trigger. I'm not interested now in looking at the address. We'll set that to don't care. And we'll now set the RAM chip select to zero. It's an active low line, so we're interested in um, any activity where that line goes low. We'll go back to waveform, arm the analyzer, and we can see that uh, there is some activity on that uh, particular line. And in fact, if we keep resetting, we'll see there's quite a lot of activity on that particular line. If I keep resetting, you'll see that we keep seeing the same addresses over and over again. What I now want to do is look to see if the processor is trying to write a value to the, um, the SRAM chip. So if we go back to trigger, we come down and we'll set write to zero. Again, that's an active low signal. Rearm the analyzer and as we can see, it is indeed, we're selecting the RAM chip and then we're trying to write to it. And if I keep arming the analyzer, you see that it's doing that repeatedly. It's the same two addresses. Now, the fact it's writing to two addresses is not that unusual. It's probably trying to save a 16-bit value to an 8-bit device. And uh, it does that by writing uh, the data in two chunks. If we now look at the data we're getting and start scrolling through, we'll see that we have uh, address 257, 258, 259, 25B, 25C, 25D, and then back to 255. And if we look through, it keeps going round and round in circles. And that's all it now does. It so it won't go any further. It's just looping round this tight loop where it seems to be trying to write a value to the SRAM and then read it back. And it does that pretty much indefinitely. It just keeps going round and round in circles. So if we look at that address, 255 onwards, in the listing, if you remember I did this uh, uh, decompiled listing, and if we look at uh, 255, we're here, and it's getting around to 25D and then jumping back. So as you can see, there's a, a jump relative here. It's going to jump to 255 if some that some um, uh, parameter is not uh, not correct if some value is not correct so in other words it's jumping from here back to here and it's going round and round in circles in this tight loop so it's not happy with the value it's, it's loading so this is a load instruction it's loading something into a from a particular place and it's counting down so something is not uh, it's not meeting a, a target here, it's just going around in circles indefinitely. What I can now do is look at the address that it's trying to um, read from and write to. In this case it's FE20 and FE21. I can turn that into uh, a binary address and then I can see which particular bits it's using to try to access, access that address and then I can follow those bits around the board 
to see which particular device it's feeding those bits to in order to try and access the SRAM. Once I've done that I can have a look and see why it's failing to achieve its target in that loop and why it's just continually looping around in circles and it's, uh, it's most likely a, a faulty buffer chip or something like that um, but what I'll do, I'll trace that through and then in the next video I'll show you what I've found and hopefully we'll start making some progress on the actual repair OK, we've made a bit of progress the tight loop it was uh, caught in was a timing loop and uh, what should have been happening is a um, a value should have been counting down that was stored in RAM but because the uh, Z80 couldn't successfully write to and read from the SRAM then the value was never properly decrementing and being read uh, it was working now and again and um, what the cause turned out to be I think I mentioned previously that sometimes you get devices that are failing and they're marginal uh, and that's the issue I had here. I had a device that was uh, marginal and that was the buffer chip that drives the main memory um, RAM bus and one of the uh, outputs was uh, very marginal. It was uh, toggling but not uh, giving enough drive to drive the, uh, the RAM chips. So I've replaced that and the timing loop uh, now exits so uh, we are going a bit further it's still not getting as far as uh, driving most of the peripherals it's now driving a few of them um, but what's happening now if I boot up the REN so the REN is now running so we can now see the power LED so hopefully you can see that on camera and it's flashing uh, a code, an error code. I've had this uh, on and off previously, but uh, it's kept coming and going depending on uh, the state of the machine and um, when I powered it up. And I think that was just the marginal uh, buffer for the, uh, the RAM chips. Uh, but what it's doing now, it's reliably coming up every time. If I reboot the RIN, um, the things to watch out for on this machine when you boot it up are the caps lock light and the uh, power light. The caps lock light comes on during a self test and what should happen that should go out and the power light should come on continuously but as you can see the caps lock light is going out but now we're getting this flashing of the power light. That's actually an error indication so it's quite a good step forward it means that the uh, REN is capable of doing some self tests on itself as I said it did it now and again before but it was uh, intermittent and usually it would start flashing a few times and then lock up uh, whereas now uh, it does this reliably if I reset the REN you'll see that uh, caps lock you probably can't see but the caps lock light came back on and it went back into self test okay and the error card is indicated by the number of flashes and if you look up this particular error um, the description of this error is a serial test using loopback on UART. I have no idea what particular test uh, it's doing. Um, obviously it has something to do with the uh, serial interface but I don't know what the particular test is but at least it now gives me an area of the board to start to focus on and it just seems to be going round and round this particular test um, repeatedly. I don't know if that's what it's supposed to do, I assume it is and what I can do is start probing around the RS-232 devices and uh, see what's going on there. Um, I'm not quite sure how it achieves the loopback test, whether it has um, some gates that uh, connect the uh, TX and RX lines together, but I'll start probing around that and uh, see if I can figure out why this particular test is failing. Uh, it does appear that the screen is intended to stay blank while this test is underway. Um, one other thing that um, we can notice now, if I just move the camera onto the screen, is that the display is now just a blank screen. It's not giving this strange um, pattern down the edge that we had before. So it does appear now that it is uh, correctly timed, uh, albeit blank. Um, 
and that does seem to be intentional by the Wren. I think it's just part of the self-test mechanism and nothing appears on the screen until the self-test has finished successfully. So I'll start digging around the RS232. If anyone's uh, seen this fault before and has any ideas what it might be, then uh, please leave a comment.